Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, today is a stunning, really hot day in the Netherlands and so naturally I am wanting to stay inside where it's a bit cooler. <laughs> so I thought, well, uh, let's try out a new hobby or a new like activity, craft sort of thing. Um, so I thought, let's try resin art. Or, or playing with resin and I think it could be quite useful maybe in some future projects that we have planned to to use resin to make it a bit more pretty or robust or whatever but I've seen it lately on social media and it looks really fun and it looks like a really cool kind of creative outlet you know uh, so let's give it a try I have ordered some starter kits from a local company uh, as well as Amazon with some molds and things. So yeah, we're just gonna mix it up and see what the result is. I haven't played with this before or anything like it before, so it may turn out really badly, but it may hopefully <laughs> uh, turn out well. <laughs> So these are some things that I bought from the internet. So this was the company that I bought the resin from. It's a local company in the Netherlands. So I bought some, some resin which has some UV sort of uh, protection. So it stops the resin from going yellow over time. So this is the part A and this is the part B. Um, it also came with some cups and it's, I also included just some little uh, pieces of decorative <laughs> things. So just some powder that we'll put in. And the, this is a, like stones, crystal stone things. And this is a uh, ink to add some color to the resin. Of course, I started with Plum Pot Colors. <laughs> and this is a whole bunch of glitter that came with the Amazon kit. So perhaps we'll use that as well. Um, along with the, the starter kit came some gloves. It's very important to protect your hands during this process. And also some um, what they call spreaders. I'm not sure if we'll need this, but it came with the kit. And of course, some mixing sticks. Um, part of the Amazon kit, we got some molds, various molds and things. So we'll try out a few and see how it goes. Since this is the first time I'm doing this, I will just see. Uh, just doesn't matter what we make. Uh, we just make something and see how it turns out. Mm, it also came with these pipettes. So I guess maybe this could be used for like the ink or some other colorants or if you want to put it delicately into the mold. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> and also came with some mixing spoons and some other sort of little attachments that you can put on afterwards. Uh, so yeah, that is what came with the kits and stuff. So hopefully I have enough. I think I have enough to get started. I did watch a few like tutorial videos and read a few like beginners articles just to get an idea of what to expect. Uh, so yeah, I think we're ready. Let's go. So apparently working with resin can be quite a messy business. Uh, so I thought it best to cover up my desk with some paper, uh, particularly baking paper, because apparently when it's dry, the resin doesn't stick to it. But if I'm just gonna throw the paper away, it might not matter, but maybe I can get a few uses out of it. Um, okay, so before we get started, we just have to make sure that we are going to be working safely. So the epoxy resin can give off or does give off a toxic residue. So it's important to wear gloves and make sure you work in a ventilated environment. So I have the window open and I also have a fan. <laughs> uh, not only because it's really hot today, but also because we need ventilation. And I also have... Uh, some gloves that came with the, the kit so we will be using gloves while we are mixing and pouring into the molds uh, once it's all dry and cured we don't need to use the gloves and everything anymore it's only uh, while it's in liquid form you're busy mixing it and it's curing it's giving off uh, 
it's doing a chemical reaction so it's giving off some more vapors uh, so also we will be using a mask I don't have a proper filter mask but I think this will be okay you know in current times we uh, have these on <laughs> on hand so yeah let's uh, now that we have a safe environment to work with let's get started 100 parts 100 parts A and 60 parts B so it's quite cool on these cups uh, it has some common ratios on it that I guess the uh, epoxy could normally be mixed in so it's backwards now because you can read it actually properly on the inside <laughs> but um, so our ratio is 60 hundred and there is actually one here for 60 hundred so it's got a line here where uh, we can easily know where to fill up A and then we can fill up B to that point and then we know the ratio is correct. So that is pretty cool. So let's try. So once I had put part A into the cup, I decided to see how this purple powder looked when mixed into the resin. So I put a bit in and mixed it up and as you can see it's really light. So I kept adding a bit more and a bit more but it never really got that dark. Um, even uh, when the resin cured, it cured much lighter, it, clear, it cured almost, almost to a clear colour. So maybe it's this type of powder or... Uh, maybe the brand, I don't know, but yeah, uh, something to note for next time. Uh, here you can see the bubbles that are formed from me mixing. I didn't really take too much care to not make bubbles. <laughs> there are different methods I read to get rid of the bubbles. One of them is to use a blowtorch afterwards on the surface of, of your uh, pores. So I, I did try that later on, we'll see. But I just used this resin as is to pour into the molds. After I was happy with the color, um, I added the rest of part B, or actually I added part B, and then it was pouring time. So I started off with these um, basic rectangle kind of keychain molds, and I filled up uh, the first two. So the first one I, I planned to leave clear just to see how that looked and the second one I added in some of this glitter that I got from Amazon. It's really like big chunk glitter. Well, <laughs> yeah, chunky glitter. Um, so I added that in and tried to spread it out a bit. The next one I, I wanted to see how these green sort of stones would look so I first put in a bit of resin to make it easy to stick and then I uh, put a bit more in and that's that. I kept it simple this test just to experiment. Um, this next one I wanted to play with the dye and look at that beautiful colour. So the dye is by far my favourite sort of uh, colouring material at the moment. Um, so yeah, so I just uh, put in some resin, added a few drops, added another drop, uh, moved it around a bit with the stick just to see what the, the movement and effect would look like. I did the same with the other side since uh, it did look like it comes as a nice heart set. So I decided to make those two the same and I think it looks quite nice. Purple is my favourite colour so I'm a little biased. Next I wanted to try this bangle mold, um, <laughs> as you can see I tried to move the uh, bigger mold out the way but I realized it was stuck and the resin was still liquid so I couldn't really move it so next time <laughs> must bear that in mind. So anyway I used a uh, little pipette to 
kind of get the resin into the mold because with that cup I couldn't really make it pour small enough or accurate enough to get into the mold so I used that pipette and then I tried to add in some of the, the ink, the purple ink and as you can see I, I kind of missed <laughs> and just had to try and scrape it in with the stick and this, yeah, this was a bit messy and clearly I did not do it the best way but in the end I got some resin in and some ink and <laughs> got it done. Maybe for next time I'll get a syringe to do this mold. So I didn't have any really interesting items to embed in an epoxy mold so I decided to use some electronic components because that I did have on hand. <laughs> so I tried to make some little hearts with resistors and it, it kind of worked out. I think with a bit of practice I can get it looking a bit better. So I placed two of them in that last rectangle mold just with the clear resin, well the clear purple resin. Purple resin. And then I filled it up to the top. Next I want to try these little like vase or sort of like elongated molds. Um, so I also wanted to embed something in there so I put in a capacitor. <laughs> uh, and I realized like there was a lot of air bubbles trapped in there and I couldn't quite get them out. And I, after doing this video I read that you could use a toothpick so I'll use that to get out air bubbles next time with objects. With this one I just literally put in a blob of ink and fold it up. I had a load of leftover resin so I <laughs> went and found this coaster that we made uh, previously and put some tape around it to make a border and fold it up with resin just for the hell of it and just to see actually if it would work or not and it kind of did work actually it wasn't maybe as level as it could have been because the tape was sticking out from underneath but the the finish at the end was quite nice so I still had a load of extra resin I did mix way too much so <laughs> at this point I was just thinking of uh, what more I could fill up. So I grabbed another resistor and I cut off the ends and put it in this little puzzle piece mold. And then I was uh, getting tired of the very light gray, uh, oh, gray, purple. <laughs> so I used the ink to make the resin color a much nicer, darker purple. But also by this point I had taken so much time so the resin was starting to cure. So I just dumped it in the rest of these molds. As you can see a lot of them have these bubbles on the surface. So I used the blowtorch to magically make them disappear. It was actually quite cool. Um, I did read that you shouldn't leave the blowtorch on for too long. So I tried to make the bursts as short and as quick as possible just to get off the surface uh, bubbles and it seems to work really nicely. Nothing melted, nothing stuck to the silicone. So I didn't do these ones because I thought maybe these ones would melt. So they uh, stayed, the bubbles did stay. <laughs> and this is, yeah, the finished products of all of them curing in the molds. As you can see, I did overflow a few of them by mistake added some glitter to these ones as well. I love the purple. So about 18 or so hours later, the next day, I came back and tested to see if it was cured and it appears to be cured. So on the website for this resin, it said the curing time is about uh, 16 to 18 hours or 12 to 18 hours so yeah that was spot on at least to handle it does take a few days to fully completely cure so i could start demolding these uh, pores that i did 
they came out of the molds really easily. I didn't struggle with any except for those uh, elongated molds. I struggled a lot. I actually still haven't taken out some of them. <laughs> Um, but the rest of them came out really nicely. Yeah, so these ones I did struggle with a lot and in the end I got one or two out and the rest I've still left in. I'm not sure what the best way is but I'll have to read that up. So I had messed a lot of ink on the mold of this one and it was very flaky when it dried but it also seemed to be quite bendy so it probably hadn't cured quite long enough or more likely maybe uh, the, the A&B mixture wasn't quite mixed properly for that pour. So for the coaster it came out quite nicely. The sides were really sticky though after removing the, the tape and also you could see that uh, some of the resin had leaked through underneath. So perhaps <laughs> plain old the uh, sticky tape is not the best mold. So yeah, this is just a closer look at each one and how it came out. You can see here that I had some uh, overflow. This could probably be fixed with some sanding. I think the resistors came out pretty nicely. It's very cute. You can see some air bubbles still trapped in there, so I need to go over some of the methods to remove the air bubbles. Also in this one, it looks quite cool with these, these, these stones, but also a lot of air bubbles. But the air bubbles also give it a sort of nice sort of texture. And you can see that I didn't realize that some of the stones were still sticking up over the top of the level of the mold, so something to take note for next time. For this one, um, I wanted to show that the glitter actually sank a bit. It seemed quite heavy glitter or, yeah, so a lot of it sank to the bottom. So it was either one side or the other, not really mixed in with it. So this was the clear one, some bubbles on the sides. So I think a toothpick will help with those bubbles on the edges. And those were the, just the, the extra <laughs> resin that I had where I mixed in some ink and some glitter. And you can see once again the glitter is mainly on the one side. And threw in some stones for the hell of it. <laughs> just to see how it would look with the dark ink color. Doesn't look great, so... I think this is very cute. The, the little resistor in the puzzle piece. One little bubble there, but next time I'll get that with a toothpick. But I think, look how the colors of the resistor come through. It actually looks quite cool. And the capacitor embedded in resin. Doesn't look as cool as the resistor, but it has potential. Maybe we can come up with something. And the bangle. It looks a little messy. As you can see, some of the, like the ink is kind of stuck onto the one side. I must go back and see if that actually sunk or if it was floating on the top. I can't remember. Okay, well, since this was my first time trying out resin, epoxy resin and molds and that sort of thing, I did learn quite a bit. <laughs> uh, a lot of what to do next time differently, uh, what not to do, um, so yeah, let me just list them out. So number one I would say is to research your resin thoroughly before you start. So I went into this just knowing the mixing ratio because it's on the bottle, <laughs> but there's not much other information on the bottle itself. So um, the rest of the information was on the supplier's website, which I didn't really check out before I started. So, you know, I found out things like what is the curing time? How much time roughly do you have to work with the resin once it's mixed together? Um, 
and that sort of thing is quite useful because like what happened with me is that I was working with it and I took far too long and it was starting to cure already in the cup while I was still busy figuring out what I wanted to do and how to play with it. So that is an important thing to know. Also some important information about your epoxy is the depth that you can pour with your epoxy. So for this we could pour up to three centimeters. So uh, I didn't actually have any really big molds, so that wasn't an issue. So, but for next time or for future projects, it's good to take note of what is the intended uh, depth that your epoxy can handle to cure properly. The next thing I would suggest, uh, and next time I will try, is to get gloves that actually fit properly, <laughs> because um, I used the gloves that came with my kit and i guess they were a random size that the supplier puts in that will fit most people and they were really big and they had a bit of extra material at the end and it was a bit of a nightmare to work with the little molds and just smaller pieces to grip things so uh yeah definitely um i will get gloves that fit um this is not a reason to go without gloves let me just say that <laughs> always wear gloves just uh, get the right size on the note of the resin curing time, one thing I would suggest is to work faster. <laughs> or actually, not work faster, but just work according to a plan. So you have an idea beforehand what you want to do, and then work according to that. Um, because I got caught up by my resin starting to cure too quickly, and then I actually couldn't use a lot of it in the end because it had gotten too thick to pour into the small molds. So yeah, definitely try Maybe next, yeah, next time I will plan ahead to try. But this was just something to experiment with and play with. But yeah, I can see why you would need to then first uh, plan out what you want to do, then you know what to mix. And yeah. And that leads me to my next point is that something I did wrong was mix all of my resin in like quite a big cup and then start mixing the colorants and everything in that big cup. Um, my intention was actually to try. A lot of different sort of uh, materials and colors inside and I couldn't do that because I had already kind of used it all in the big cup so what I will do next time is divide the clear resin into smaller cups so I'll put the A and B in the big cup um, and then I have about 30 minutes to, to pour it before it starts curing so I'll put A and B in the big cup mix it up according to the ratio on the cup and then put it into a bunch of smaller cups or other cups, other plastic cups, which then we can put in our different materials, put colors and that sort of thing. Um, that, I, that will work a lot better. Okay, so another thing I did wrong, which will probably come with practice, is I was overfilling the molds. So I would uh, fill it past actually the top level of the mold and then it would kind of over, overflow a bit onto the top of the edges of the mold and that doesn't go away <laughs> so i mean maybe it can be sanded and cut away sure so that's something i can try and see if i can clean up these ones that i have uh, but i guess it saves you a lot of time and effort if you just fill up to the top of the mold and don't go over <laughs> make sure it doesn't overflow so yeah that was a really fun experiment and it kind of got my creative juices going um, but before I dive into kind of some projects I'm thinking of using it for, I think I will first try a few online tutorials and try and get my project to match what they get, at least to get an understanding and get practice with different methods for the epoxy art and make sure that I get the best results possible. Because some of the results I got today, <laughs> well, they were a beginner's try, the, a first time try, so they didn't look particularly great. So I want to practice it a bit um, in the basic molds to make sure that um, the end result looks as good as it can. So yeah, maybe I'll get some more inks, because I only have one ink and two powders, and I'm not sure the powder didn't seem to color the resin that much maybe I need to put way more in I don't know we'll see um, so maybe I'll get some more inks and then try some uh, arty stuff if any of you have any suggestions or tips or tricks I am all ears <laughs> um, I'm just getting started so you know I know I have a lot to learn for this but I think it will come out really nicely with some of our future projects before I go just another huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.